Hi everyone, Stefano here, Soto Zen channel. I made this simulation a few days ago and I think I found some interesting tips to share with you. So yeah, I decided to prepare this new tutorial. It's not really a step-by-step -step video. I sometimes probably go a little too fast for absolute beginners, but if you have some basic knowledge of Blender, I think you will follow it perfectly. So let's have a look at how I made this using rigid body simulation inside Blender. So the first stage is to build all the elements that will be involved into our simulation. Of course, we need a container, some sort of basic glass that we can easily model starting from a basic cylinder mesh. I shade it smooth and under the normal menu, I turn on this auto smooth option here. In edit mode, then I deleted this top cap face and I added some loop cuts in order to increase its resolution. And then I use the solidify modifier to add some thickness to my object. Here I check the even thickness option and also why not the height quality normals. Now on a new collection we need some marbles and in my case I appended these four that I used in one previous project of mine. And by the way you can watch it here if you want. I will add the link in the description. Also, you can download all these 3D elements from my Patreon page, becoming a supporter of mine. Or, lastly, just add four UV spheres and you are ready to go as well. Now that we have our simulation object on our scene, we want to make this cylinder a passive rigid body. And under collision shape, we need to select mesh because we want all the marbles to fall inside its shape. And because we want these four UV sphere to be free to move and interact between each other during this simulation, we want to choose for them active rigid bodies. These I appended were already active rigid bodies, but you have to assign this property to all of them and you can leave all the other options as they are. Now, because we want our simulation to be epic, we need way more marbles inside here. And to do this, I just selected them, duplicated and rotate all of them around the Z axis in order to add some randomness to their distribution inside the jar. Then I play this simulation and wait until they reach a rest position on the floor of the container object. What I want now is to use this result as a starting point for a new simulation. And to do this, I choose rigid body apply transformation. I can now go back to the first frame with all these marbles in their new position. Are we satisfied? Of course not. We want more. So duplicate all of them once again, rotate them and play another simulation. Like before, we wait until they reach a stable and final position, select them all and apply their transformation. I repeated this process until my container was full. Now, this is not intended as a shading tutorial. However, because you know that when dealing with glass, it's always going to be a hard time, especially if you are going to use EV as a render engine in Blender. I know that using cycles, I would probably get better results, but at the cost of longer render times. So for the purpose of this video, I decided to go with EV and I'm currently using the glass shader from cgcookie.com that works quite fine, avoiding me a lot of headaches trying to uh, fake the glass behavior in Eevee. So in case you also want to try out this shader, I will provide you the link in the description below. Now we miss a floor plane like a table that we will use later as obstacle. So I just added and textured a plane with some plank wood material that I bought from polygon.com. Also for this, I will provide a link in the description. Now that we finally have all the simulation elements in place, it's time to dive into probably one of the most important part of this tutorial, 
we will use the self-fracture free add-on in Blender to break this container object into several chunks. Here I set the source limit to 200 and add some noise but beside that I leave all the other values as they are. We don't even need to set a second slot material here because we are using a glass material so we don't need this. This add-on will make a lot of boolean operation and in order to keep it fast and clean I found it more convenient to avoid to deal with this recursive shutter option and instead apply more than once this same process. I will show you what I mean in a minute. After the add-on completed its work we will get all these shutters overlapping the original object. The first thing to do is to create a new collection and move all these pieces into there. Now this boolean object that we have contains a lot of unnecessary vertices and what I found is that selecting them all at once and entering edit mode I can merge by distance all these garbage elements. See down here almost 5000 vertices removed. Now they are looking bad because this operation probably messed up all the normals orientation. But we can fix that checking this auto smooth option here under the normal menu and in order to propagate this to all the other chunks right click on this checkbox and choose copy to selected. This cleaning process by the way also make possible to add upon these shutters another cell fracture operation that otherwise most of the time doesn't work at all. So as I mentioned before now I select some of these bigger pieces and I reuse the add-on setting the source limit to 10 or 20 this time. Now a quick tip in order to not mess up with all these objects after the cell fracture is complete you have all the new shutters already selected for you. You want to enter edit mode now and merge by distance all the unnecessary points and then back in object mode just click once or twice upon one of the new chunks until you see the outline selection of the overlapping original mesh and then you want to be sure to delete that one. Now I speed up the video but I'm just repeating this very same process for a few other big chunks in order to end up with a more irregular and nice result. This way will be probably a little bit longer but you will end up with meshes that will work perfectly during your simulation later and also you will have more artistic control over where you want or need more details in your fracture process. Ok guys we are at a good point and here I just added one more UV sphere that will be animated to hit and shatter our glass. So I select this last marble and at frame 20 I insert a single keyframe for the X axis. Few frames ahead I move the sphere very close to the glass object and added a new keyframe. And then I make this sphere an active rigid body checking the animated option. Then animating this parameter I can tell Blender that this sphere will switch between an animated object to a simulated one, inheriting the movement and direction from its previous animation. You can see here the behavior of our sphere is very interesting because it's moving on a straight line following its keyframe animation and then it falls down continuing its movement based on a rigid body simulation. At this point my scene is well organized into different collections. One for the marbles, one for the glass or jar object, one for all the shutters object and one for the table. And now I select all the glass pieces, make them active rigid bodies, checking this deactivation option here and copying these properties to all the others from the active object. Now if we play our simulation you see that all the chunks stay in place because of the deactivation option waiting for the sphere to touch them and then they fall down. I want to improve this in fact I want the marble to be faster so I reduced the frames needed to move between the two points in order to add velocity. And also I increased its mass value to 100. 
looking better. We start to have something here, but I also want some of the chunks at the base of the glass to stay in place. To do this, I create a new collection named Passive Shutters. And with the circular selecting tool, I select all of these and move them into the new collection. Then I change the rigid body type to Passive and then copy this property to all the others. And now it's time to unhide all our marbles. We need them to be active rigid bodies, of course. Unfortunately, in my case, I have to pay attention because the glass marble I made is actually an hierarchy. So I can't just select them all. Otherwise, all the child elements would become rigid bodies as well. So here I was forced to select all the others before and then pick all the glass marbles to make them rigid bodies. But if you have just UV sphere in your scene, you don't have to follow this part. Just select them all and make them active rigid bodies. If we now try to play our simulation, it will be very slow because of course many elements are involved now and interacting one with each other. But before we can bake this simulation, we want to animate the render and viewport visibility option for all these shutters object. We need our original glass to be visible until the wall simulation starts. So let's unhide and select it and move to the right frame, the one before the bullet marble hits the glass. And under the visibility options, just set a keyframe for both viewport and render visibility. And the frame after that, we need the glass object to disappear, to be replaced by all the chunks. So let's uncheck both properties and set another keyframe. Let's hide all the marbles now. And now I want to select all the shattered glass pieces and both active and passive. And at the right frame, where they start to break apart, we want all of them to be visible. So let's insert a keyframes for both properties like before. And now one frame backward, they all have to disappear. So uncheck them and set keyframes as well. Pay attention here because until now we actually animate only the active object. One solution to uh, solve this is to press Ctrl and L and link the animation data to all the others. And you can see now they are switching visibility, giving the illusion of the breaking glass. And after a few tests, I found that increasing the rigid body world speed value to 1.6 gave me more realistic result. Maybe it's just me, but most of the time simulations made at this default value of 1 seems to me a little bit in slow motion. So I tend to always increase this speed value a little bit. Almost finished. Just set the length of your scene, in my case 150 frames, and finally hit bake and wait. This was my result. I also animate a simple turnaround camera, set an HDRI image as environment map, add one sun lamp, to add some shadow. Also, I changed the table wood texture, uh, but as you know, are all basic stuff and I know you are able to do probably better than me. And this was my final result rendered in Eevee. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, please leave a like, subscribe my channel, visit my other main YouTube channel, Soto Zen, where I have a lot of 3D animation and VFX stuff. And finally, I have also a Patreon page there you can find out all the benefits that comes applying to one of my tiers. This scene has many others and 3D models associated to my tutorials will be available for you there. And as always, thanks so much for watching my video. Have a great day and see you soon here with another great tutorial. Ciao!